Okay, hi everyone, welcome to a brand new video. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the Python GUI libraries. Namely, we're going to discuss five Python GUI libraries, so, so the five most popular libraries, and we're going to discuss what each one of them is, what features it provides us with, how they compare with each other, so how we can choose one. We're gonna compare different aspects for each of these libraries. And finally, we're going to go over a short list of pros and cons after all of that. So we're just going to compare, then pros and cons. But first, let's just actually describe these libraries and actually talk about what GUIs are. So briefly, I'm just going to go over this in half a minute because I know that most of the people watching this video are going to actually know what GUIs are, but it doesn't hurt to say it. So it stands for Graphical User Interface, or GUI, or GUI. It's an interface through which we communicate with the program that we wrote. So instead of using the command line, we have an interface, it has buttons, it has text fields, it has sliders, scroll bars, labels, all sorts of things that communicate information as well as ask for some interaction on our behalf. We use our mouse or the touch screen to be able to actually interact with this program. So that's basically it. Those are what GUIs are. They are what you see when you're working with an application. So the five most popular Python GUI libraries, which we will be discussing in this video in depth, are Kivi, PyQt5, Tkinter, Wix Python or WX Python, as well as PyGUI. So these are the libraries that we're going to discuss. The way this video is structured is that I'm just going to describe briefly each of these libraries and then consider the aspects that make them win or lose against each other, and finally some pros and cons. So stay so stay tuned. So first of all, the Kivi library. So Kivi is actually based on OpenGL. OpenGL means that you can draw in 2D and 3D as well as use meshes and shaders from game development. So in the same way that you would use meshes and shaders for the textures or the sort of, I want to say colors, but it's sort of the the way it looks, the way things look, so it's a texture or a mesh or a shader. And this is very popular in game dev. So Kivi here attempts to use some features of game dev into GUI programming, and this is very nice. It, it makes your GUIs very nice looking and very advanced. It is designed to be cross-platform, especially for mobile. So that's the thing about uh, Kivi is that the reason it was born in the first place is that the developers just wanted a good standard mobile dev um, platform with Python. So Python was actually weaker in mobile dev until Kivi came along and made it actually able to create mobile applications with Python. So for mobile, definitely consider Kivi. However, we'll just discuss more of this and how to choose one in a minute. So like we said, modern looking GUIs, we already mentioned this. So moving on. So the PyQt library. The latest one is PyQt5. Before it, we had PyQt4. So the PyQt5 library is actually an implementation of a much larger thing. So the Qt Application Development Framework. This is a framework that's available over a series of languages, mostly C++. So it's very popular in the C++ community. And it is a standard GUI library actually for C++. So, so PyQt5 in this sense is a wrapper for that C++ library for the Qt framework and making it into Python. So by learning it, you're just lear learning part of something much bigger. However, that's not very important right now. We'll just talk more about it in a minute. One very distinct feature of PyQt, at least for me, it is the Qt Designer. So the Qt Designer is actually an interface in its own. It's a drag and drop interface, meaning you would have a dialog or a widget and what you would do is you would just drag a button, let's say you want to put it on top of the page, you would just drag it, drop it right where you want it, you would organize things, you would put some text there, put some labels, put some images, and it's just you doing all of this without even coding, just by drag and drop. And then you can add some functionalities by attaching it to your code and just having your application done in a very smooth manner. So Qt Designer for me is a very important aspect of PyQt, and it's what makes it a bit more special than other libraries. But however, like I said, more pros and cons and different features later in a minute. 
the tkinter library this is the standard gui library with python so this comes built in there is no need to install it not even that and it's popular because of this because it's very easy you don't need to install anything and it's quite simple to learn so it's re very recommended for beginners so that's what makes it po uh, popular however it being that simple usually has a drawback in it not having many advanced capabilities we'll discuss that more in a minute Another one is the Wix Python library. So similar to how Qt5 is, it's an extension for a larger thing. It's an extension for a cross-platform GUI called Wix, uh, API called Wix Widgets. And Wix Python is its extension into the Python library. One distinct feature of Wix Python is that it provides native support. So if you don't know what native means, to put it in simpler terms, it means that when you have your application, let's say on Windows and on Mac OS, the application looks different because of the way of more, it looks more similar to the way other applications look on this OS. So it uses the native features of this operating system or of this platform to be more accurate. And then it structures the look of its application Oh, depending on that platform. So, you know, we have many apps that exist, let's say, both on iOS and Android, and the app looks quite different from iOS and Android. However, it's the same app. Usually what that is, is that it uses the native functionalities of iOS versus those of Android, and it sort of matches the rest of the phone. So th that's what native is. And that's what makes Wix Python particularly distinct with providing native support. Finally, we have the PyGUI library. So this started as a smaller project, but it has grown because of its simplicity. Undoubtedly, it is the most lightweight of all. It's very lightweight, very easy to run, very simple, and it's very good for beginners because of its simplicity. So now we're going to talk about the different things that we have to consider when choosing the best library. So we're going to have a list of things, and then for each one, just tick the library that makes most sense to you, that you, you feel it would provide the best for you. And then you could weigh these libraries against each other and realize what's the best for the application that you're trying to build. So let's start with the platforms. So before we can actually discuss the different aspects of each uh, library, we, it's best to talk about the platforms. So you can rule out any library that doesn't actually um, support the platform that you want to develop for. So Kivi, like we said, it supports Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, iOS, and Raspberry Pi. It is by far the most cross-platform of all of them because it has so many platforms it supports. Like I said, it was built for mobile, so it's um, so the way it it has support for Android and iOS is particularly important, and it looks the same on all platforms. So it's not native. It doesn't depend on the platform it's using. It looks the exact same on all platforms. This could be a pro or a con, depending on the type of application you're trying to build, depending on how you want your application to look. PyQt supports Windows, OS X, Linux, as well as iOS and Android, but it's mainly used for desktop. So don't let this fool you into thinking that PyQt is amazing for mobile. It's actually not. It's mainly used for desktop. However, it has that mobile support. Tkinter uses Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, so purely desktop. Wix Python, so like we said, native support for Windows, OS, and uh, Mac OS, and Unix. So. Similarly, Pi, Pi GUI also supports Windows, Mac OS, and Unix, but not in a native manner. So these are the platforms that each one supports. If you're looking for mobile, I would say you could definitely just stop at that and go for Kivi. I highly, highly recommend Kivi for mobile. But if you're still looking for a desktop, then just keep watching this video and just see the different things that could help you decide. So the learning curve. If you're a beginner, the learning curve for each language or framework or library is very important for you because you need something that's not very hard to learn, that's not super annoying to learn, so you can actually delve into your application faster than actually spending the entire time learning something new. Kivi is very beginner friendly. However, there's one thing you need to note is that it requires special syntax for the KV language. So this isn't a programming language, it's sort of a special syntax, like we said for Kivi specifically, and it, we, it uses the special syntax to be able to design the GUIs. So don't be fooled, so don't be fooled into thinking, oh no, I have to learn something completely new. No, you don't. You just have a special different aspect to it, but it is very beginner friendly, like I said. Now, PyQt, 
I believe PyQt is the hardest among all of these because, like I said, it's part of a larger scheme of uh, it's a part of a larger framework. So that makes it harder. It has much more features, much more complex features. So it is harder to learn. The functions are a bit hard to memorize. So I don't. I don't want to say I don't recommend this because it is harder, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. So I'm here providing you with the information. The decision making is all on you. So Tkinter, it's popular for its simplicity. Like I said, there is no installation, so it's very simple to use, and it's popular for that, and it's very easy to learn. Wix Python is also easy to learn and understand, and PyGUI is the simplest of all for beginners. So the bottom three, I believe you can use them because they are super simple. However, this simplicity sometimes comes at a cost that you cannot provide these very large and wonderful and advanced application. However, if you're looking for just something simple to be able to visualize your program, I would say maybe go with Tkinter, Wix, Python, PyGUI, especially if it's just desktop, obviously, and not mobile. And for many advanced features, you go for PyQt, but it is harder to learn, or Kivi, like I said, and Kivi is very beginner friendly. The capabilities. So there are some capabilities or extra features that each of these different libraries provides. Kivi is very high performance, versatile, and it provides very modern looking GUIs. So like I said, PyQt is scalable for high scale apps. So as your app grows, you need very little code to be able to modify it to sort of um, work around with this growth and adapt to it. Tkinter is not very scalable and as your program grows it starts to fail and it starts to get a bit messy. So keep that in mind if you have a plan for your program to really grow. Wix Python, it does have advanced widgets and it is, it is okay with growing so I would say go for it. And PyGUI like I said it's very simple so you would use PyGUI in the case where you have a GUI and it's just very simple uh, user interaction with the application and not at all that you know large and very advanced application. So like I said, it's your choice here, but I have the information for you and now you know how each how each GUI framework or library scales. So the pricing. It's important that you consider pricing, especially if you want to release your application or use it for any commercial purpose. Kivi is open source. You can use it for free. You can deploy your apps for free. Nothing to do here. PyQt is not free, actually. So the bottom three are actually open source. So Tkinter, Wix Python, and PyGUI are open source. PyQt is not. Um, so it's the only one that's not free unless there is one condition where it would be free. So for commercial applications, PyQt is not free. You have to pay to use it. But if your application itself is open source, then the license allows you to use PyQt for free. So this depends on what your app is. If your app is open source, then there's nothing here that would trouble you. But if your app is commercial, keep in mind that you must pay for PyQt to be able to use it. The community. Now, on my channel, whenever I have these videos where I'm comparing different technologies or languages, I always tend to consider the community, and it might be something weird to consider, because why does it matter? Well, the community matters, especially for a beginner, because you need to be um, able to have a community where you would have people answer Stack Overflow questions, you'd have tutorials, you'd have documentation, or maybe not the actual official documentation, but like other creators doc documentation like you need something that would allow you to have so many resources abundant resources so that whenever you face a problem you can either ask stack overflow and have a bunch of experts answer you or you would just search and you would just find your answer directly however it's not always the case for most technologies some people are comfortable with that they don't mind learning something that has a relatively smaller community but other people are not very comfortable with that idea so let's just discuss this here so for kivi there are sort of less resources. It is not that popular in a sense that the resources are very abundant. It is growing, so the resources are growing. You would find YouTube tutorials, of course, but maybe not in huge abundance. The documentation is not amazing with Kivi, so that's something to keep in mind. If you're someone who learns from the docs, who just doesn't even, who just ignores all tutorials online, and just learns from the documentation, this is something to consider here. PyQt has very good tutorials and it's popular in the sort of tutorial area, but documentation is not amazing. And I have C++ written here because there's one thing to note. Most of the PyQt documentation, instead of actually providing docs, 
just links you back to the general C++ Qt framework docs. So if you don't know C++ or you don't know any language that's sort of close in syntax, like maybe if you know Java, it would be a bit more readable. But if you only know Python and you go to read some C++ code uh, that the Qt the PyQ documentation links you to, it would just appear super confusing. And documentation is honestly something they need to work on because it's it's a very large uh, library and a large framework, so I don't understand why it's so neglected in that area. That's one thing to keep in mind. For Tkinter, it has actually an old and active community, and the reason that is, is because it's built into Python. So Python has a immense community. If you search Python tutorials, you just keep searching forever and scrolling through the different pages. Tkinter is the same thing because it's a part of Python. Resources are abundant, so that's something to keep in mind. Wix Python has a growing developer community because people are actually liking it and depending on it for their simple and straightforward applications. PyGUI is a, has a smaller community because it is a simpler GUI, it is a newer GUI, and it's a sort of smaller project, just in general. So now that you discuss these aspects, so we have, we compared some di different aspects and how each language, um, I'm sorry, library works with each of these aspects. We're just going to discuss some short pros and cons for some other languages that we can be able, uh, uh, libraries, I keep saying languages, that we can be able just to know some distinct features some of them provide. So KV, we said mo modern GUIs and we have multi-touch capabilities which makes your applications all the more interactive if that's something you're into if that's something you're interested in then maybe you could go for it or can heavily consider kibi it is really focused on mobile apps like i said so i've said this multiple times in this video it was built for this case so if you are going for mobile go for kibi this is very easy it's almost a no-brainer and creating apks is super easy and it's just something that's very straightforward now Although PyQt5 is also cross-platform, like we said, Kivi is more designed for mobile. So these are some sort of pros and cons of Kivi, some things that make it a very good application. Now, I've discussed Kivi and PyQt5 here in this section of the video, mainly because they are the biggest frameworks and uh, the more discussed these days because of the new things they provide. However, you should keep in mind everything we said about the other three, so Tkinter, Wix, Python, PyGUI, especially if you're going to be using them for very simple um, programs where you just need a little user interaction with the GUI, then maybe you could go for them. But I'm just saying that as a side note. And finally, the final slide, so the other pros and cons of PyQt this time, so specifically PyQt, Everything you learn with PyQt is transferable to other languages. So like I said, the specific C++ existence of the larger Qt framework, so any language that has bindings for Qt, it pretty much uses the same functions. Now, of course, with a little syntax changes between the language itself, but the functions remain pretty consistent over other languages. So if you code in both Python and C++, this is something you learn once and then you can apply it to both of them. It's a larger framework. There are so many features you can learn. So keep that in mind. Qt Designer, again, is a major pro, and I have to stress this. The presence of this drag and drop interface where you can just create so many different things is very important, especially if you're someone who likes to build their GUIs with the smallest code possible. And personally, I am that person. I enjoy drag and drop interfaces, be it here or be it, let's say, in Scene Builder with Java. It's just something that really makes me comfortable and I enjoy coding with it. It also offers the best styling from all the GUI libraries we discussed, so you can embed CSS into it in a breeze. It's super easy and it's super straightforward. So when you use CSS, you obviously have a whole like new world open up for you because CSS just has so many very nice styling features. So that's basically it for this video. I hope the information given to you was useful so you can decide the best GUI for you and for your application. Please leave a like and comment if you enjoyed this video and if you know that uh, which library you're going to use. So stay tuned for your next video and goodbye.